Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK and if it's the first time you're coming to my channel or visiting it or just passing through, you can like if you like the video, share if you feel it can help someone else or subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos. Anyway, um, today I decided, well I was listening to Akon actually, he was talking about um, Africa versus America and how um, the way you talk about a country is the way that people see it, you know, like how the media markets and brands. And I was thinking to, I was thinking to myself, he's got a very, very interesting point. Because the, how have black people been branded? How have we been marketed? How have our countries been marketed and branded? When you see Africa, what images do you see? Do you see those, those emaciated children with flies hanging around their heads? Do you see people calling up, crying about poverty and asking for us to pay money so that they can get fresh water? When you think about the Caribbean, especially recently about Jamaica, what do you hear about murder? You don't see anything positive. You don't see the positives about the Africa or the Caribbeans. It's always the negatives. And that is the way they brand our countries. And the same way they brand our countries is the same way they've branded black people. They've branded black people as criminals, as being lazy, as being um, wanting something for nothing, scroungers, layabouts, having no ambition, in prison. And when you see images of black people, how do you see them? They look horrendous or they're under the police baton. You know, the police are beating them up or they're in handcuffs or they're pushed up against a wall. That's how they brand and market black people. That's the image they want people to see of black people. They want to see black people as negative, the same way as they portray their countries as negative. When the Windrush people came over, how, do, how was England branded? England was branded as the land of milk and honey, plenty of jobs. That's how England was branded. Coming over here, it was the British Empire. People from Jamaica and the Caribbean thought they were coming over to a country that was comfortable, that was welcoming, and that had everything. Where are the jobs now? How was America branded? The land of opportunity, the land of hopes and dream, dreams, the land of the brave, the land of the free. How are people operating in that country now? Are people, do people have opportunities? Are people free? So it's all in the branding. So when you look in the mirror, you have to ask yourself, how do I want to be branded, especially as a black person? Do I want to be branded how the media brands me? Is that how you want to be branded? Is that the image you see of yourself? And I was reading something today about the imposter syndrome. And it applies to a minority of people. Not only, it doesn't have to be race, it could be gender, it could be anything. But it's where the dominant class seems to be superior, regardless of what that dominant class is. And then the, in, the minority class don't feel as though they're entitled. They don't feel as though they're worthy. They always feel as though they have to work twice as hard as the, as the dominant class. If somebody says to them that they are good, they don't feel that it's true. They feel as though, oh, they're just saying it. They don't feel as though they're worthy. That's the imposter syndrome. And we have a lot of black people have that imposter syndrome because of our history. And, be and people say, why is it happening now after all these years? Because generations of our parents feeding us down miseducation, telling us things that weren't true, telling us things that they were told. And they had no reason to disbelieve. They had no reason to disbelieve teachers. 
They had, and they didn't have Google and they didn't have YouTube and they didn't have all these ways of finding out what is true about our race, what is true about our people. So everybody just believed it. And what happened is, is that it created our personality the way a lot of us have now, that we do not feel as though we're really and truly good enough. But you have to think that that has been perpetuated. It's not true. And you need not to believe it's true. You have to believe that you are entitled, that you should expect the best. Because when you think about white people, they expect it. They expect the best. I mean, we might have our, we might get our back up about the way they behave. But when they walk in a room, they walk with expectation. They walk with entitlement. And that is because they have been considered the dominant class. And even if they are, it's because a lot of black people feel as though they sh they're not, they don't have a right to expect. And once again, that is due to how we've been indoctrinated, how our minds have been conditioned and, you know, being miseducated. So um, let me just make sure I've covered everything. I was just thinking that. Um, oh, yeah, I put, you know, I was thinking about America and the UK, how easy it is with a country that has technology um, to deceive us into believing that the West is the best thing since sliced bread. And it is true because when you, you don't expect, and the thing is, the sad thing is, is that, you know, even though the, the USA and the UK have a reputation to keep, and I believe that is why immigrants are being blamed, because they've got to blame somebody for its demise, for what's going wrong at the moment. What else are they going to do? Are they going to tell us that they've cocked up? they've made wrong decisions are they going to really admit to that and destroy their reputation they're not england is the place of sovereignty it's 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 the creme de la creme they cannot admit so they have to blame on the immigrants and make people think that they're the reason why the country is failing and the country is falling but once again, it's what we have is what we hear on the news, fed time and time again every day. It's the way the system is marketed. It's marketed to deceive. It's marketed to um, make you think differently about what's happening and to distort your view and to distort the truth. Um, what else did I write down here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Directors, filmmakers, journalists, social media have been complicit in tearing down Africa and, and, the, um, and the Caribbean. Because, you know, have you noticed when anything bad is happening? You know, I, got, I get these things about Jamaica and, you know, it's because my parents are from Jamaica, but it really pees me off when people pass around negative things about Jamaica. You know what I mean? Because it's just reinforcing the negative stereotype. And these are the kind of things we need to change. We need to change what we share, whether it's about the Caribbean, whether it's about each other, whatever it is. We need to stop sharing negative information. Somebody sent me something this evening. This woman was beating a child. Why the hell would I want to see a video with a woman beating a child? I don't want to see that. What am I supposed to do with that information? I'm not watching it. I don't like it. But that is what people share. They share sensationalism. They share negative stuff. And instead of sharing stuff to uplift, to uplift and unite so that, you know, we can reframe our thinking, they don't do that. They reinforce the negative. So, yeah, I don't know why I get so passionate. Um, yeah, let me think. Yeah, I put here the TV um, papers are selective in what they want us to see. Um, UK and USA are hell-bent on preserving their reputation, whatever the cost. Um, the West doesn't want us to know that their countries are sinking. Why do you think it's important for them to bring in the immigrants? 
to make it look as though they're to blame for destroying their immaculate reputation. They have to blame someone. Um, yeah, when you think about when they show Kenya and they show the terrorist attacks, there's never anything positive. I'm going to put some links in um, below. And you're going to be shocked to see what Africa really looks like. For those of you who haven't seen any recent images of Africa and what the Caribbean looks like. It's not just about murder. It's not just about poverty. It's not just about desolation. It's not just about disease. You know, these countries have everything. They have food, the food that grows off of the trees. They don't have to go to the shops if they don't want to. They have fresh water where they can get water to drink. It's green, it's beautiful. They have warmth and sun. And yes, say, so why did the hell you come over here for? Say that. But it's because our parents didn't appreciate what they had. And a lot of people, and it's not only Caribbeans and Africans that migrate, White people, they migrate as well all over the world. I did it in another video. I can't remember how many whites or British, if I'm thinking about the UK, have migrated all over the world. They're in different parts of the world. So it's not people just coming here. You have to bear in mind that people from here, whether it's from here or America, are going to different parts of the world. But people don't seem to think that, you know, everybody's in their little bubble. Everybody thinks it's just about them and just about where they are. And it's not. It's distorting the truth. Um, let me see what else I've got to do. Yeah, I'll put here. Um, how do we want Jamaica to be portrayed? Do we want it to be about murder? Or do we want it to be about our heroes, our athletes, our beautiful countrysides, fresh water and food? It's your choice how you want your country and your people to be represented, to be portrayed. And it has to be accurate. You have to believe it. But you have to create it. So you can't sit back and think, I'm going to be doing all this stuff and it's going to work by itself. It's not. You have to rebrand yourself. You have to rebrand your culture and you have to rebrand your country so that it's more attractive. America is on the ball. The UK, they're on the ball. Biggest marketers, best marketers, best branding specialist. I mean, Trump, he's brilliant. I mean, that that um, that thing he did, that um, promotional thing he did about, you know, every year he's going to be a president forever. That's about branding. Ingenious. And that is what that is what has been happening for all these years. Black people have been misbranded and the countries have been misbranded and mismarketed. And that's why we're in the position we have we are in now. So we need to make a change. You don't have to blame it on anyone. You don't blame it on the white people. You don't blame it on the oppressor. You just look at yourself and you look at your family and look for the good in them. Look at what they've achieved. My mother, when I look at her, a strong woman, mortgage-free house, free of debt, living, not, you know, even with her disability, she wears a smile. See what I mean? And she still does what she can do with her limited capacity. We have to look at those people and look at them for, our, for strength and determination and for resilience. And stop looking at the negative stereotypes that, that bring us down and make us feel embarrassed that we belong to a black race. Every time you see a black face, you have to kind of shuffle in the corner and think, oh, oh God, you know what I mean? That's not how it should be. Don't let yourself be taken in by the hype. Rebrand your family. Start small. Rebrand the process, the thinking. Recondition, re recondition the mind. You can only do that, you know, by re-talking, re-educating yourself. The information is out there. Nobody has to tell you anything. 
You don't have to blame everyone. You know, we live in a blame culture. Everybody gets blamed for everything. We don't need to blame anyone for where we are now. All we need to do is be aware of where we are and why we've got to this place and see what we can do to change things. Um, just quickly, what else? I don't want to go on too long. I tend to do this. So, okay, so currently, the current image we have of black people is that they're failures, they're criminals, they're handcuffs, being beaten up by the police, they're loitering. And then I was coming home this evening. I see these three boys, three black boys. They didn't look like they knew where they were going. One minute they were going up in a corner, the next minute they're coming back down. And I'm like, if the police see them, what are they going to think? They're up to no good. Walk with purpose, for Christ's sake. <sighs> anyway, what is the truth? You know, they talk about single fathers, single families, but we have a lot of black couples in lifelong relationships. Not every relationship is a failure. Look at the ones that have, you know, stood the test of time that haven't looked for a quick fix. You know, it's not easy to sustain a relationship. It takes discipline and it takes selflessness. You can't always be thinking about yourself. It takes sharing and giving and trusting. But if you're going to, you know, end a relationship every time the slightest thing somebody pisses you off, of course, the relationships aren't going to work. And we live in a society that encourages that, that encourages things to come easy and to let go. We live in a disposable society. So people always think, oh, yeah, OK, get rid of her or get rid of him. And, you know, there's somebody around the corner. The reason why relationship, the purpose of relationships is for that discipline and it is for the stability and it is so that you can grow strong and know about resilience and purpose and function and the reason why two people, two strangers get together and against all odds, they overcome the changes, the culture, the different values, the different principles, the different thoughts, the different feelings, the different experiences. They overcome all of those differences and come out on the other side, loving each other even more than they did when they first met. That's why relationships, they're not supposed to be all this lovey-dovey stuff, kissing and cuddling around the corner. That's not what relationships are about. They have a purpose. Anyway, um, so we've got many successful black people. We've got this millionaire, Aliko De Conte. Uh, he's a cement tycoon. We've got Robert F. Smith. Um, we've got the great kings and queens of Africa, Shaka Zula, Musa of Mansa, Amenhotep, Queen of Sheba, Nefertiti, Queen Nandi. The largest man-made stru structure in the world is in Nigeria, the, grand, the, the Great Wall of Benin. A lot of people don't know that. There's also a, another man-made structure in Burj Khalifa, located in Dubai. Stands a whopping 2,722 feet. Stands 160 stories above the ground, 900 feet higher than the World Trade Center. Can you imagine that? Um, what else? We've got the longest river in the world, Nile. But I'm talking about, I want to talk about people, black people, just to show that they have passion with, pa well, with passion and determination and conviction. You can be successful. It's not about the other. It's about yourself. So we have the great people. We have the obvious like Bob Marley, Rihanna. Bob Marley's Jamaica. Rihanna's Barbados. Nicki Minaj. She's Trinidad and Tobago. We've got Shaggy, another Jamaican. We've got Grandmaster Flash, Barbados. Sean Paul, Jamaica. Chantel, Barbados. I'm sure we've got people from other islands, but these are just the ones that I brought out. We've got Usain Bolt, um, Jamaica. We've got Kayla White. Um, We've also got Alex Irene Candy. She is the first black female to become a neurosurgeon in America. She got a PhD in nuclear engineering. We've got Katherine Johnson calculated trajectories for Apollo space missions by hand, another black woman. We've got Alice Ball, the first female to earn a master's degree in chemistry. We have Madam CJ Walker, the first female self-made millionaire in the USA. She was born a slave. So we've got no excuse.
Um, we've got Dr. Samuel Rounds performed the first human kidney transplant that was not between identical twins. Um, and we've got Doug E. Fresh, Barbados. Barbados is the island nation, uh, sorry, Barbados is the world's 53rd richest and the Caribbean's second richest country in terms of GDP per capita. So not all people squander their money. So like I said, we have to look at our parents, aunts and uncles who have escaped the law, own properties, are successful in business and are able to save. Those are the people we look at. We don't look at the ones on the TV. We don't look at the ones on all these videos that they're passing around, reinforcing the negative. And how do we rebrand? We rebrand by not believing the lies and the hype. We rebrand by not looking at the negative in black people and perpetuating it. We rebrand by not criticizing our fellow men, regardless of their mistakes, but we focus on their achievements. We rebrand by showing that we are a race that can support and uplift each other. We rebrand by focusing on achievements of our ancestors and predecessors and not on their failings. And we rebrand by looking at slavery as a way to show that, you know, to show that we were able to overcome adversity. And we don't have to look at it as a negative. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And that's all I've got to say for now. Bye-bye.